In this OPAMP exercise, we have already solved part A. However, let's read the entire problem before we embark on part B, which is the one that interests us now. This is part B. In the circuit in figure below, assume there is no saturation and determine the output voltage and uh, the output power for each of the two OPAMPs. VO1, VO2, PO1, and PO2. We did that already, and we found out that VO1 would have been negative 65 volts, and VO2, the output of the second op-amp, would have been positive 8 volts, like so. But the part that we are about to solve is part B. Determine if either op-amp or both op-amps are saturated, and compute again VO1, PO1, VO2, and PO2. Let's begin by writing down the results we found in part A of the exercise. This voltage would have been negative 65 volts and VO2 would have been positive 8 volts if the circuit was linear, if there were no saturation in the exercise. Well, immediately you say, wait a minute, negative 65 volts is below the possible minimum imposed by the power supply, negative 12. So what I'm going to assume is that this op-amp is negatively saturated so that the voltage is negative 12. And this one, 8 volts, is above the top limit imposed by the power supply, positive 6 volts. So this voltage has to be 6 volts, and this op-amp is also saturated, positive saturated in this case. I'm going to assume that that is so, and that this voltage is plus 6. Well, but these are assumptions, you see. These are intelligent guesses, but we cannot state that that is so. Why is that? The circuit is in a nonlinear state, and human common sense relies on the linearity of the system to make its guesses, its predictions. We'll begin with this reasonable guess that the top up amp is negatively saturated, the voltage is negative 12 volts, and the bottom up amp is positively saturated, the voltage is positive 6 volts as the power supply. But we have to prove it. Without proof, that doesn't stop being a gas. The proof is very important because in some cases after we solve the circuit, the op amp is indeed saturated, but saturated at the other end of the power supply. Under saturation, the negative feedback equation doesn't hold. It is not true anymore that Vn equals to Vp in either of the saturated or assumed saturated amplifiers. How do we prove that? Starting with those assumptions, we solve the circuit and find Vn and Vp for each one of the two op-amps and we compare them with the conditions for positive or negative saturation. Let's do that. I have identified node 1 and node 2 and branch currents already, and node 3 for the second op-amp. Let's write the necessary KCL equation. I repeat, no negative feedback equation this time, because we're assuming the op-amp is saturated. KCL for node 1, currents going in, 12 minus V1 over 4 equals to the currents leaving the node. This current continues to be 0 amps, we know that. And the other current leaving the node is V1 minus minus 12 divided by 40, like that. Now the equation, the KCL equation for node 2, currents going in, 10 minus V2 over 4, and that is equal to this current, which of course is 0 amps, plus this one, V2 over 4, and that is KCL for node 2. We have two equations and two unknowns, V1 and V2, but we observe actually that each one of the two equations is independent from the other. So we solve the second one, V2, and we obtain from this equation that V2 has to be 5 volts, same as before. And we solve the equation at the top for V1. That is the equation, and we're going to solve for V1. V1 is 12 volts, positive 12 volts. Now we have this value, V2, which is no other than Vp for that op-amp, Vp1. And V1 
that is Vn for that op-amp, Vn1. And uh, indeed, Vn1 is greater than Vp1. And we have proven that this op-amp is indeed negatively saturated, which was our assumption. But that assumption needed to be proven, and it is now. Vo1 is negative 12 volts. Quierat demonstrandum. Let's go with the second op-amp. Same as before, this current continues to be 0 amps. There is no voltage drop across this resistor, so Vn is V3 for this op-amp. Let's compute V3. For that, we write a KCL equation for that node. Currents going in, this one, 6 volts minus V3 divided by 3 equals to 0 plus V3 over 3. Let's solve that equation for V3. V3 is 3 volts. V3 is 3 volts. But that happens to be Vn for the second op-amp. Vp for the second op-amp continues to be 4 volts. Let me write that down. Vp for the second op-amp is positive 4 volts. So indeed, Vp of the second op-amp is greater than Vn of the second op-amp, and that proves that that op-amp is saturated. Positive saturated. VO2 is positive 6 volts. Let's go now with the power output of each one of those two op-amps. Same as before, we need the output current of each one of those two op-amps. This current, IO1, the output current of op-amp 1, is equal to this current, which is VO1, negative 12 volts minus V1, whose voltage is also known, plus the current that goes down through this resistor, negative 12 volts minus 6 divided by 3. With that current and that voltage, we will compute the output power of that op-amp. The output current is negative 6.6 .6 amps. We multiply that current times this voltage and we obtain the output power of this op-amp. And that output power is 79.2 watts delivered power given the signs and the directions of voltages and currents. And now for the second op-amp, we need to compute this output current, I02, which is this current, 6 minus minus 12 divided by 3, plus this other current, which is 6 minus V3, 3 volts, divided by 3. That current is 7 amps. The output power of that op-amp, PO2, is those 7 amps times 6 volts. 42 watts delivered power as well. And this completes the solution to this exercise. Thank you very much.